time for mass with Mr. Thomas. Yay, hey, hey. We've made it to the end of graph transformations. This is the review lesson. So this is just the key points from all the other lessons. Remember, it does not include every slide. So if there is anything you are unsure of, you are best going back and looking at these individual lessons. So we started off looking at the shapes of different graphs that we have seen in our past. We have sine x, cos x, tan x, you know them off by heart. We've also been introduced this year to exponential graphs and their inverse logarithmic uh, functions. That's what they look like. Also, other ones that you have seen, we've dealt with straight line for years and years. Y equals mx plus c. The degree is just one, meaning the biggest power of x is just one. It's something x to the power of one. If the degree was two, you would have something squared, which means you'd have your quadratic. It's going to be your smiley face or your sad face. Cubic function, the degree is three. So you've got something x cubed. Uh, plus or minus something else. And the graph is doing three things. It's going up, down, up in this case. Uh, that is not always true, but a lot of the time it is. And your quartic function, the degree is four, so the graph's doing one, two, three, four things. It's going down, up, down, up. Again, not always true, but it is a lot of the time. If the degree is zero, it means you're just going to have y equals a number. There is going to be no x. It will be x to the power of zero. And if you have that, you've just got a horizontal line. Graph transformations then, we looked at these amazing things here, and there are six in total. Very quickly, just going over all six. First of all, we had y equals f of x plus or minus a. This was Muzamel's favourite. The graph is just moving up or down by a certain amount. So if we have f of x plus 5, every single y value would be going up by 5, as you can see here. If you had a minus, it obviously moves down. After that, we have y equals f of x plus or minus inside the brackets. If it's within the brackets, it'll shift the graph to the left or to the right. Remember, a negative moves the graph in the positive direction and a positive moves the graph in the negative direction. So with this example here, you have f of x plus 2. So the plus moves the graph to the left in the negative direction two places. So you subtract two from all the x coordinates and the y values will just stay as they are. Number three was y equals negative f of x. If you have that, then you're going to reflect the graph in the x axis. So any parts above the x axis will then end up below. Any parts below will then end up above. This part here, how it's going up towards infinity, would then go down to negative infinity and so on. Really what you'll have is your x axis will be your line of symmetry. So if you turn your page or your head or your laptop or whatever on its side, that there should be a line of symmetry. And you can easily see if you've got that right. The next one we had was y equals f of negative x. Very similar, but this time we're changing x from a positive to a negative. If you do that, it means you're changing 7 from a positive 7 to a negative 7. So you're reflecting it over the y-axis. So this time your y-axis is a line of symmetry, as you can see here. So all the x values will change from positive to negative, or vice versa. And the y values will remain as they are. The fifth one, y equals kf of x. This time we are stretching or compressing the graph vertically. Think back to sine x or 2 sine x or 3 sine x. Well, that was changing your graph by stretching it or compressing it. So here um, we had f of x to graph 3f of x. All we're wanting to do is multiply the y values by 3. Obviously, if it's on the x-axis at negative 5, 0, if you multiply 0 by 3, it'll stay at negative 5, 0. Uh, but the other points would be moving up here. Okay. Next one, we had y equals f of kx. So this time, again, it's going to stretch or compress the graph. But if you think back to sine x, well, how did sine 2x change it? If you remember, James was telling us that there were two 
uh, cycles of the sine graph between 0 and 360. So it's compressing the graph. So what you want to do is to get the new x value, you divide um, by k. So 12, 18 would become 318 if you had f of 4x. Or 28, 11 would become 7, 11. You're just wanting to divide by the value k to stretch or compress the graph. These were the six transformations that we dealt with. As I said, you do need to know them off by heart. Make sure you don't get them mixed up because sometimes you'll have to apply more than one transformation. For example, we've got something like this. Y equals negative F of X plus five. So here we're reflecting the graph in the X axis and we're moving it up five units. Well, which do you do first? Do you move it up and then flip it or flip it and move it up? Who knows? Well, what you need to do is you need to think about the word bid mass. Bid mass lets you know the order to do it in. As it says here, sometimes the order doesn't make a difference and you do end up with the same uh, graph no matter which way around you do it, but sometimes it does make a difference. So here um, you have got the negative one times f of x, so treat that as a multiply and the add is on the end, so you do that after. So you've got brackets, indices, divide, multiply, add, subtract, so you would multiply that first. So in other words, uh, you would flip the graph on the x-axis and then you would move it up five. We had a few examples with the composite functions. If you're given something like three minus f of x, you are best rewriting that first of all. It just makes it easier to understand. So you could put negative f of x and then the positive three you could just put on the end. Again, think about bid mass. Treat that as negative one times f of x and then treat that as just add three, which it is, uh, which means you would flip this graph in the x-axis and then move it up three. That's what you start with and that's what you finish with. We had a few more examples with that, but then we moved on to logs and exponentials. And we can apply these transformations to our logarithmic and exponential functions. There's a quick recap on what your exponentials and your logs looked like. Remember the points that an exponential always pass through. It always goes through 0, 1 and then 1a. Your log uh, function, which is the inverse of an exponential, really reflected in the line y equals x. That always goes through the point 1, 0 and then a1. Sometimes for these questions you'll be asked to work out certain values before you apply a transformation. For example here we have y equals a to the power of x. We are given this point 2, 9. So if you sub in 2 and 9, replace x with 2 and y with 9, you could work out the value of a as we did in that example. After that, we had to sketch the graph of a to the power of x minus 5. Think back to your transformations about which one that was. But because it's inside the brackets, it's going to shift the graph to the left or the right. The negative will move the graph in the positive direction. So every single point would move to the right 5 units. Think back to these transformations. We had other ones as well that were a wee bit trickier. For this one here, we had y equals log base ax plus k. This is a definite. This is definitely a harder example, but you need to know uh, or think of everything that you know about your log functions. So they always pass through the point one zero. This one here is not passing through one zero. It's passing through negative three zero, which means it's been moved to the left four units. If it's moved to the left in the negative direction, it means you would have a plus four inside the brackets there. Also, if you thought, think, right, well, if the graph was moved back over, so if you moved it to the right four units, it would now pass through one zero, and this point would then pass through uh, eight one. So the value of eight would be eight. I'll go into this in more detail in that lesson if you're not sure. But give this a shot. Anything you are unsure of, let me know or look back to those previous lessons. Try it in the Heinemann book, page 47, exercise 3P. Check your answers as you go. But that is us finished with this chapter. We will be back with the next chapter in a wee bit. I'll be back.